This is the Zcam E2 F6 modular cinema camera, and it can do this. All of that in this tiny body for $4,000, the Z-Cam. Not the Canon R5, which is supposed to be announced today as I'm posting this video. I apologize, I don't have an R5, even though a lot of you have been saying I've been hiding one here at the office and even using it. It's just been the EOS R, I do not have an R5. I wish I did, sorry. The first time I heard about Zcam was a little bit before NAB last year, and then I got to see it in person at NAB for myself. And honestly, I saw the specs and I was like, oh my gosh. I saw the size and I saw the price and I was like, this is too good to be true. There's gotta be a catch. It cannot be this good. But the more I learn about the Zcam and the more I've used it, I'm starting to think it's like the equivalent of when Aperture, uh, this light company that I'm using right now, when Aperture showed up, I remember seeing the first Aperture LED panels and they were so much cheaper and offered more convenience with things like the remote. I thought, there's no way this can be. This is like some knockoff company, not high quality, this can't be good. Then I bought some and since then, I pretty much exclusively use Aperture lights Everything you see here is Aperture, and that's because they're cheaper than most filmmaking lights. They're really easy to use with this remote, and now with the app, plus the quality is still really good. So the Zcam kind of reminds me of that. It's cheaper, it seems pretty easy to use, and you still get that high quality image and tons of specs. And when it comes to a camera, most things within reason, most problems, quirks, I can solve, but the one thing that you can't really fix is the image. So. What does the image look like on the Zcam? Well, to me, it's another massive surprise. I was expecting the image to not look that good, but everything I've filmed so far on this Zcam E2 F6 looks really high quality. And for me, the image is one of, if not the most important thing because I can deal with headaches if at the end of the day, I can look at the footage and be like, dang, this looks so good. And first off, I gotta say the dynamic range looks incredible. Even in super harsh midday sunlight, it looked like I had nice, soft, beautiful light. It just looked really good. I was very, very impressed with the dynamic range. Even with the sun beaming straight at Tyler's face, it still looked good. And I gotta say, the skin tones to me look pretty natural. I was surprised that I, usually skin tones in cheaper cameras feel off. They just don't look that good. And to me, the skin tones look really natural and great and the footage was very easy to grade. I filmed in their log profile and different codecs, except I actually didn't use any of the raw. We'll get to that in a little bit. And as you know, sometimes log can be really hard to color grade or get it to a nice place, but the Zcam, right off the bat, I didn't have any issues with it. And yes, it's true, this thing can do 6K at 60 frames per second, 4K 120 frames per second, 10 bit, now, there are some caveats, so you can only do the 6K and 60 and 4K and 120 in the 241 aspect ratio and the 120 frames per second. You can't do it in ProRes, you can only do it in the H265 codec. And also the 120 frames per second does have a crop. I'm not sure exactly what the crop was, but I'd say it's around 1.3 to 1.6, somewhere in there, so that's good to know. But other than that, this is a full frame camera. You're getting a full frame cinema camera for $4,000, which is absolutely insane. And probably one of my favorite things is that it shoots in 
ProRes. You have a bunch of different flavors of ProRes, and that's what I would be shooting with is the ProRes. Like I said, I don't really have a use for RAW. I find that the benefits of RAW just aren't enough to deal with the workflow headaches of using RAW, especially with something like the Zcam where you have to then use their software, uh, do some tweaks and then export that. And then you, it's just too many steps and it's massive file sizes. ProRes is like that nice medium where you're getting really high quality, but it's a really nice, easy workflow. 99% of the time, I would rather use ProRes. It's really high quality. Uh, so I'm a big fan that Zcam is using ProRes. Even on the new R5, I just can't see myself shooting raw. I don't think that it adds enough quality for how much of a workflow headache it is. And yes, the E2 F6 is a $4,000 cinema camera. I mean, what cinema camera costs four thousand dollars but it, it isn't quite a complete package as you can see there are buttons and there is a tiny little LCD screen but you're not going to be doing much focusing from that there's no battery included so it's kind of bare bones just the brain it is a modular system so you can add to this and make it the type of camera that fits your needs I love how many mounting points there are so you can add different cages and grips and handles to it I love that it uses Sony MPF batteries because they're cheap and easy to find and it's tiny for a cinema camera. This really feels like a modular system that could work. It's like a cheaper version of the RED system. I feel like this is what RED should be, but RED just becomes so expensive because you have to buy their accessories, their monitors, their everything. It becomes really, really expensive, whereas the Zcam is pretty cheap on its own and you can add whatever third-party products you want to this thing. It's got a mic jack and a plug for your headphones and it has a mini XLR, which I'm not a big fan of, but it's still nice to have. Take CFast cards, which for me is nice because I already have a bunch of CFast cards uh, from my C300 and the 1DX2. They are expensive, but I have a feeling with CF Express coming around, uh, CFast cards will get cheaper. I could be wrong, but for me, it is convenient. For other people, that might be a pretty big inconvenience because they are expensive memory cards. And there is a USB plug you can record to an SSD drive. But if you haven't checked out Gerald Undone's review of the Zcam yet, uh, you should definitely do that. He goes into a lot more of the technical stuff, whereas I'm usually I'm, I'm more about what can this thing actually do? What does it look like? What is the footage like? And he talked about how annoying it is that if you lose power, you lose that clip. There's, there's no getting it back. Now, there is a little bit of a workaround that you can set that it splits the clips every four, 10 minutes. But that's also annoying because you can't just join those up in Premiere or Final Cut because there's actually an audio gap. So you have to use their software to connect them. So that's just an extra workflow step that I don't want to have to deal with. So that's kind of dumb. And then let's talk about, is it easy to use? And just by itself, it's kind of a nightmare to use. It's really hard to get through the, the menus. There's no scroll wheels or dials to change f-stop or shutter speed or ISO or anything like that. But they do have an app and you can connect this thing to the app, control the camera, and you can actually see what you're filming on that app. Now the problem is the app would not work for me. It just never connected no matter what I would do. The only thing I haven't actually tried is hard plugging it in through the USB. But everything I've seen, for example, Kai W's review of a Zcam, the app looks really great and there's very little latency with the Wi-Fi connection and even less with the USB connection to the point where Kai W was saying that it's less than uh, an HDMI connected monitor, which I thought you're definitely gonna need to buy a monitor and use that, but they're starting to go the aperture route and make things easier. So you would actually be able to use your smartphone as your monitor and to control all the camera settings. And that to me just makes sense. We all have a smartphone in our pockets. Why can't we use that as an external monitor and to control 
all cameras, all cameras should be doing this. All Canon cameras, Sony cameras, Fuji films, everybody should be doing this. And that makes the Z cam even cheaper because now you don't have to go out and buy an external monitor. You can just use your smartphone, which we all have. Game changer, if it worked. <laughs> I hope all camera companies start going this route and start using smartphones as an external monitor slash a way to control your camera. And I could see if the app worked for me, it would be really easy to use the Z cam. So for me, how easy was it to use? Not that easy because I was actually having to rely on this little screen and go through all the buttons and all that. And I didn't have a cage or a handle or anything. So it was kind of awkward filming with this <laughs> camera. But at the same time, that's also a good thing because you can configure your camera to your needs uh, depending on the project that you're working or your shooting style. Post wise, I will say the footage was pretty heavy for Premiere to handle. Uh, my 16 inch MacBook Pro was not doing a very good job with it. It was kind of, a nightmare to use actually. The Mac Pro uh, does a better job, but that is a $27,000 computer. So just be aware that 6K might be a little bit heavy for your computer. But like Gerald Undone showed, the 4K super sampled looks about just as good as the 6K, so you might be better off just using the 4K instead of the 6K in the first place. Some negatives, I did notice in the H.265 codec when I was filming myself, there was like this weird red blotch going on. Um, and so I probably wouldn't use the H.265 or H.264 codec much. I would mostly use the ProRes codecs. When I don't need as much uh, quality, I would use the ProRes LT. When I want the best quality, I would probably use the ProRes HQ. Audio wise, I probably wouldn't rely too much on internal audio. There is a scratch microphone, so you do get some sort of sound so you can sync it. I'd probably record externally, but it's also not terrible. And low light, I didn't get a chance to test it out myself, but I didn't see any issues in Gerald's video, um, except for maybe a little bit of a color shift, which is annoying, but it's not that big of a deal to me. And it does have autofocus, which was surprising to me. It's not very good autofocus, but it does work if you uh, ever need to, you know, film yourself a little bit. Overall, honestly, the Zcam E2 F6 keeps surprising me, first with the specs, then the quality and the ease of use, hopefully. Yes, there's quirks, no, it's not perfect, the splitting the files, all that stuff is pretty annoying, but I have a feeling that Zcam is gonna be a big name in the future, if not a game changer, like Aperture's been. It really feels like they're trying to do something totally different than the other camera companies. And it feels like a modular system that might actually work. I feel like a lot of modular systems kind of fail because you're forced to use certain accessories and products and then those come with a premium price and it just ends up being really, really expensive. This modular design seems like it could actually work really well. You get to decide how you customize your camera and you can still go bare bones with just a lens, the body, and a battery, and then you just connect your phone to it. That's pretty great. So the question then is, who is this camera for? And I feel like it's for the people that want something like a RED, but just can't afford it or don't wanna spend that much money on it. If you didn't see my uh, editor, ex-editor Matt's video on him buying a red instead of a house, like that comparison's pretty crazy. Reds are very expensive and the Z cam offers a lot of that same quality maybe perhaps, perhaps, at a much more affordable price. So to me, this is a great camera for music videos, for short films, for weddings, unless you're trying to record, for example, the speeches, anything long format like documentaries or sit down interviews, I probably wouldn't recommend the Z-Cam with its quirks right now. But if you want really high quality, beautiful cinematic images and you don't want to pay an insane amount of money for it, the Z-Cam might be the camera for you. It's definitely surprised me. I hope it surprises you also. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Sorry if you were waiting for a vlog. We'll be back to the vlogs tomorrow. See you guys.